Hello and welcome. I'm Karishma Sadani, and with me today is Sumit Gupta, the co-founder and CEO of one of India's hottest and also the first unicorn cryptocurrency startups, Coin DCX. Welcome to the show, Sumit. Thank you. Thank you, Karishma, for inviting me. Now, let me begin by asking you, Sumit. Given that the work on a legal framework for cryptocurrencies is underway, what would be an ideal approach for the government to consider? Sure. I think uh, this, first of all, this is a very uh, positive and welcome move by the government of India was pending since long. And uh, we, as one of the industry participants, were trying to have this discussion with the uh, government and uh, policymakers so that we are trying to bridge the gap in terms of how to regulate crypto best as an asset class. And I think um, uh, after several uh, discussions, there has been more clarity in the government around crypto as an emerging asset class. And the thought of moving away from banning crypto and in fact, positioning India as a very strong nation when it comes to fintech innovation, I think that's going to take uh, India far ahead than, than other countries and position India as one of the leading blockchain and crypto hub uh, in the global landscape. Uh, in terms of the regulatory framework, I think all of the investors or uh, all of the regulators work in the direction of, direction of investor protection. So uh, I, I think the approach should be uh, uh, to to understand the space, work uh, close with the uh, work closely with the industry players, uh, players like us or other uh, exchanges, and then figure out okay what is the best framework so that we can uh, uh, protect customers, we can protect uh, investors, and we can also lay out guidelines which is not uh, uh, restricting the industry and and uh, create a conducive environment which is going to uh, promote innovation happening in this space. I think that is very much needed. Uh, so that we are we, we eliminate the bad actors out of the system and and allow legit players to operate with full transparency, full public disclosures, so that the government can charge due uh, taxes or uh, you know uh, they ensure that all the laws of the lens are being followed. Well, right, you just mentioned about the banning part. You know, now from 2018, when a draft bill was proposed to ban cryptocurrencies, to now that we're talking about recently, when government officials have indicated that a ban may not be feasible. Do you think there has been a shift that you have noticed in the thinking of the decision makers? Absolutely. There's a clear, clear shift in terms of how government was thinking about it earlier. And a and, and lot of it is driven by a lot of positive movements that are happening outside India. Uh, a lot of progressive nations have adopted crypto. They have understood that it's very difficult to ban a technology. In fact, uh, instead of fighting against technology, it's very important to regulate understand and ensure that investors are protected. Uh, so I think that that has been the driving factor. And, and also, uh, you know, like it, it's it's not a very easy technology to understand. It takes a lot of time and investment uh, to understand what's happening globally and then, you know, how it can work in the favor of the nation, right? So that, that has took some time, but I think clearly, for example, earlier, uh, you know, crypto was seen more, more as a, uh, 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 payment system, but it is actually not. It is not a currency. It's, it's more like an asset class that uh, a government should think of it. And that's how it has been evolving in other countries as well. So with that sense, I think uh, a lot of that confusion, which was earlier there, now it has gone away. And, and government is more open to the idea of adopting crypto. And that is clearly seen from the traction that uh, players uh, like CoinD6 have seen. Uh, many, many millions of investors who are keen to learn more about it. And they, they're just waiting on the fence, uh, waiting to get a, a nod from the government side. Is, is it okay? As of now, uh, there has been a lot of positive movement, but earlier it was a lot of confusion around crypto, whether it is legal to buy, sell. Uh, post the Supreme Court judgment, again, there has been a lot of uh, a positive movement in this front. And now I think uh, from now on, it's just going to uh, go positive from here because government is now trying to understand and seeing what is the best possible way so that India also uh, uh, India does not leave behind in the race, but also becomes one of the leading players globally. We have got uh, 45 million people who are associated with the IT industry, developers, engineers. Uh, even if like 5% of them adopt this technology, uh, India is going to be a global hub when it comes to blockchain and crypto revolution. Taking that forward where you're saying India is going to be the global hub, what is the current global framework on cryptocurrencies that is the most relevant for India to consider? I think India should uh, not think of this as a currency because it is currently not being used as part of payment system. But if anyone wants to invest into Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of these crypto assets, uh, they should be allowed to do that, just like how people invest in gold, silver, right? Just like how we treat commodities. Uh, a similar uh, framework can be applied there. Uh, India should charge proper taxes uh, so that government revenues can also go up. There's a huge revenue potential for the government. Uh, many of these investors have uh, uh, gotten significant uh, profits from crypto investing. 
government right. should lay out a clear tax guidelines so that all of that tax goes to the government and government has this uh, another revenue stream uh, to collect taxes uh, uh, you know from from this industry right now should india treat cryptocurrencies as an asset class i know you mentioned this uh, in your last answer but more to talk about that yes i i feel india should strongly consider this as an asset class because i think one is this industry is very rapidly evolving right uh, we we uh, we have not seen any uh, uh, major use case of crypto as part i think uh, what government is doing in terms of cbdc that that is definitely a great step uh, government should continue focusing on that which is uh, a digital rupee pack uh, to inr uh, but but this is more like a asset class which uh, indian would want to invest in so that uh, you know as as more and more adoption is happening india does not leave behind i think the approach of treating crypto as an asset class is is the uh, right way forward in my opinion right what safeguards would you propose to be introduced in the law uh, can you repeat please now what safeguards do you think the government should be looking forward to propose uh, in the law what are the kind of aspects that should be included sure uh, so to highlight uh, to highlight some of the points here i think all the exchanges right uh, uh, are are self regulated we follow all the guidelines kyc aml guidelines so i think uh, one is to work with the industry players mm -hmm. to set up properly laid out guidelines and exchange regulate exchanges once exchanges are regulated you can control 95% plus of the activities there is full transparency all of the data that uh, you know uh, whatever amount people are trading in all of that can be uh, you know uh, government have access to and and that will add lot of to transparency people will pay taxes uh, on whatever activity they are doing i think this is the first step again this is not uh, you know a very easy uh, uh, thing to do you it should be a phase wise approach first regulate the exchanges uh, uh, and and uh, work with them in terms of building a regulatory framework and then build the uh, ecosystem around it because i think that uh, regulating exchanges that is where the buying and selling of cryptos happen and and then you can go deeper from there right you know there's a lot of uh, debate about who should regulate it so who do you think should regulate cryptocurrencies in india should it be the rbi should it be the sebi or should it have some elements of you know self regulation i think because uh, crypto is a such a fast growing industry and it's very difficult to put a hard uh, you know uh, boundaries around it if you do it then the innovation will hamper so i think the right way uh, to approach this is to have a very fluid framework mm -hmm. and and which works in the direction of consumer protection Uh, and then lay out specific guidelines okay the, you know ring fence uh, players operating in this space uh, any any bad actor should not be a part of the ecosystem all the players uh, who are essentially uh, uh, you know a part of this uh, should be uh, under government eyesight so that all, uh, only the uh, you know uh, legit players are operating in the country and they are following all the guidelines to ensure that investor money uh, is protected uh, that plus because it is ever evolving it's important to keep it fluid also you can't just uh solve for all the problems today because the space is also evolving uh, globally for example there's a travel rule that will determine okay where the crypto is going from like the source as well as the destination you can track all of that just like how it happens in the bank transaction so if you are able to work closely with the players i think all of those questions can be answered and and india will continue to innovate without putting any uh, uh you know harsh restrictions because the moment you start doing that mm -hmm. early on then it will hurt the innovation so it's a gradual step taking it one step at a time work closely with the industry solve whatever concerns that the government has and then make sure that we create a conducive environment for crypto players or or blockchain protocols to emerge and grow in the country so do you think that the government should undertake a public consultations before finalizing uh, the law absolutely i think public consultation is should be there because there are 15 million investors who have invested there are uh, 500 plus startups there are lakhs of people who are directly or indirectly associated with the industry and this industry is hiring aggressively billions of dollars are coming in uh, and and like another billion dollar lying outside who are waiting to enter into india just in this space alone so massive opportunity um, i think the government should uh, do a public consultation or in, uh, at least industry consultation because that has not happened in the past right and and Uh, right now industry is trying to reach out to the government and and having that discussion i think that should happen proactively on a, on a com common public forum so that at least we, we take the right steps right uh, the objective is the same we would want to do things which benefits the nation i think that sort of public uh, consultation or or industry consultation is definitely going to lead us to build a robust regulatory framework which benefits the industry a lot
Right. Now, so my finally, before I let you go, explain us the phenomenon of NFTs. Now, you were seeing also the Bollywood stars have started to issue them, and that's become quite uh, uh, newsworthy when we are talking about the user interest. Definitely, I think there is a whole uh, uh, you know new creator economy that is being created, and and a lot of these people realize the importance of of uh, their network, and you know they have. Uh, got these uh, uh, creativity in them, and and like with NFT in place, all of these, uh, you know, whether it's Bollywood stars or or pre, uh, uh, you know, artists out there, they would want to showcase, and there's no broker in between. So there are various right. uses. I think in NFT, uh, and again, it's going through various ups and downs. It will have its own cycles, but shortly, if you look at it, the long term, uh, it's going to open up a whole lot new economy uh, built on top of blockchain. Because earlier, like blockchain decentralized things, right? But in creator economy, in, in uh, in this creativity field, I think there have been various brokers. Now you can just eliminate all of that, and it just gives a whole new paradigm for for these new artists and and builds a new economy leveraging blockchain technology. So in the long term, definitely bullish about it. And India uh, is already seeing a lot of traction again, not just India but globally. Uh, but if if we want like uh, spaces like DeFi, NFT, uh, even like crypto investing, all of that to prosper, I think the the uh, clearly laid out regulatory framework is a must because when that happens, you will have uh, uh, this uh, economy growing way faster, right? And and uh, you know it, it just supports the ecosystem. You will have a lot of these companies created within India, which otherwise will just move base outside the country. There will bring then that happen, and and uh, it, it's not a good outcome for the nation, I would say. Thank you so much, Sumit. Of course, there's a lot to talk more, but I will have to let you go because uh, we see that uh, now crypto is on the road towards the regulation. And I think uh, in uh, less than a few, uh, four to five months, we're going to learn something on that. Thank you, Sumit, for joining us. Thank you.